Welcome back to another episode of Swamp Stories. For this video, we cover one of the wildest stories in New York history. It's not exactly the biggest topic, nor does it cover any celebrities, but trust me, these storylines are unmatched. It's the story of one of the boldest men in the Bronx paired with one of the coldest officers we've ever seen. It's safe to say that this is a good one. But before we get into it, let me run the intro. The story begins in the Dominican Republic, an island located in the middle of the Caribbean. If you're unfamiliar, the DR has been one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere for quite some decades. And to make matters worse, in the 1960s, political turmoil caused a massive exodus. Supporters of one political party feared retaliation from the new leader and they figured that they needed to leave. So starting around 1963, thousands of Dominicans began immigrating to America. Over 50% settled in New York City with the vast majority settling in the Bronx. Slowly but surely, over the next three decades, the Bronx had become 15% Dominican. For reference, that's 210,000 people. Well, coincidentally, during this period, the Bronx was one of the wildest places in America. The streets were filled with crime and there was major rivalries between neighborhoods. Unlike LA where there was massive gangs, in the Bronx it was one blocker project versus another blocker project. I say that to say that the Dominicans had no unified presence, instead they abided by the Bronx politics. In the streets this worked out fine, but in the system this was a problem. In Rikers Island, the Dominicans were outnumbered by major organizations. With the presence of the Latin Kings, BGF, and the Crips, the Dominicans had a major problem on their hands. That's when two Dominican inmates came up with a solution. These would be Leonidas Sierra, also known as Junito, and Julio Marine also known as Caballo. In 1992, they created the Trinitarios, all for self-protection. Well, as the Trinitarios grew in Rikers Island, they also spread into the streets. Throughout the 90s and 2000s, they gained a dangerous reputation, known as one of the most ruthless to ever hit the Bronx. Because they originated in prison, the nature of the Trinitarios was very structured. The top rank is known as the Primera, who's essentially the biggest shot caller. And second in line is known as Segundo, the man who relays his messages. Well, long story short, a bunch of Trinitario sets formed throughout the city, each having their own Primera. And the biggest and most powerful set happened to form in Brooklyn, specifically Sunset Park. They became known as the Sunset Trinitarios, led by one of the most feared men in all of New York. This would be a man named Ediberto Santana, also known as Flacco. Flacco was a Primera leader, but completely unlike the rest. He called himself La Suprema, a position he created above a Primera. His idea was for Sunset to spread and each have their own Primeras, all calling up to him. This structure went against the Trinitario rulebook, but like I said, Flacco was different. Starting around 2010, Flacco made it his mission to bring the Sunset Trinitarios into the Bronx. This would not be a walk in the park as they'd have to face the Latin Kings and Dominicans don't play. But on top of this, the Sunset expansion was unnecessary as the Trinitarios already existed in the Bronx. Flacco's expansion was unprecedented, but he really wanted to be the king of all Sunsets throughout the city. Well, this right here did not sit well with the Bronx Trinitarios. They told him that they didn't need the sunsets and to stay back in Brooklyn. Flacco simply did not care and was willing to go against his own gang if that's what it took. So in 2011, Flacco sent his men into the Bronx to recruit, and if that didn't work, he told them to send messages. Sadly, it's alleged that over the next two years, Flacco claimed the lives of three Bronx Trinitarios. Flacco would be arrested, but not for many years down the line. In the meantime, he brought the Sunset Trinitarios into the Bronx and made them a powerful force. 
he became a feared character in the Bronx and Trinitarios were afraid to go against him. Over the next couple of years, he created two official Sunset neighborhoods in West Bronx. These would be Fordham down to 184th and on the other side, Fordham down to 182nd. Quickly, they both became the most hated in the area as no one around them liked them. This is because La Suprema had them on go, stepping on anyone who got in their way. Essentially, the members had no free will as they did whatever they were told. The constant following of orders from La Suprema gave no room for individuality. While one particular Sunset Trinitario was not too thrilled about how things were going, this would be a young member named Andrew Dunn, also known as Caballo. Caballo was a certified stepper in the Bronx and was well liked by all of his fellow members. Well, around 2017, Caballo began telling them about his frustrations. He even expressed ideas of quitting and starting his own hood. Some members were on board with him, but others were afraid to cross Flacco. Regardless, after months of convincing, Caballo finally got enough members to join him and do the unthinkable. In 2018, Caballo and a small crew of Sunset Trinitarios broke away and started their own gang. Caballo named them the Shooting Boys, also known as SB. He then chose a territory in a main block, one of the only unclaimed areas of the Bronx. Their main block would be on 155 Zeezer Place, but they claimed everything around Devo Park. If you look on a map, this is only a few blocks away from the Sunset Trinitarios. And why this matters? Well, after they broke away, the Sunset Trinitarios were not too thrilled. Right off the bat, the SBs were rivals with their former brothers, on top of everyone they used to beef with. This now made the Shooting Boys the real EBK of the West Bronx. No one liked them and certainly no one was willing to click up with them. Because of this, their members had to be fearless and willing to risk it all. So let me introduce you to the original members. First, you obviously have Andrew Dunn, also known as Caballo. Then beside him are two rappers, Reality RD and Vladdy SB. Then there's the main steppers. You have Victor Almonte, also known as Flaco Capone. Then you have Moises Fontanez, also known as Goya. Then there's Joel Ortiz, also known as Brooklyn. Wander Rivera, also known as Siru. And finally, Ramon Rodriguez, also known as Pollo. Together, these guys were absolutely the most hated in the region. Because of this, the SBs were ultra aggressive and always making sure that no one unfamiliar was lingering on their turf. June 9th, 2019. It's an ordinary summer night in the Bronx and Caballo and two members are hanging out on the block. As you would expect, the members are watching cars go by and constantly checking the corners. At 9 p.m., Caballo and Flaco Capone notice something strange. They spot an unfamiliar man at the end of the block. The members then look at each other and get suspicious. So together, they walk down to the corner to confront the man. They ask him what he's doing there and he responds, I'm just hustling. For years, this was neutral territory in the Bronx and the guy clearly has no idea that the SBs are claiming it. Regardless, Caballo sees this as disrespect and he wants to prove a point. So he presses the man aggressively until the point where he turns around to run away. And that's when Caballo makes a wild decision. Bang. Thankfully, the man was okay after being rushed to the hospital. But sadly, this is how the SBs began making a name for themselves in the Bronx. This may seem like a normal occurrence in Chicago, but this is New York where incidents like this are very rare. And what's even crazier is that Flaco Capone and Caballo were able to get away with this for the time being. And after getting away with this, they made it their mission to start bullying the Bronx. And that takes us to two weeks later, June 23rd, 2019. It's a Sunday evening in the Bronx and the Sunset Trinitarios are posted up on 182nd and Grand Concourse. Well, once the SBs get word of this, they order a young member to go make a statement. This would be Malvin Restudio, a cold young member. 7.15 p.m. Malvin walks from Zeezer Place all the way down to 182nd with nothing but mayhem on his mind. When he arrives to the corner, he sees nothing but Sunset Trinitarios. And without hesitation, he lets loose. <laughs> Thankfully, he pulled a Ben Simmons and everyone was okay, but regardless, this set the tone for the new rivalry. However, after doing this, the SBs had something else in mind. 
They needed money, and this was a struggle because no one in the Bronx would ever work with them. So to solve this problem, Caballo and Goya came up with a plan. Everyone in the Bronx knew not to trust them, so they started making connections across state lines. In the early summer of 2020, they formed an online relationship with a plug in suburban New Jersey, specifically in a small town called Southbrook Mound. Well, the SBs convinced the man to meet up and make a deal inside of his hometown. July 6, 2020. Caballo and Goya leave the Bronx at 6 p.m. and head down Interstate 95. At 7.15, they arrive in Southbrook Mound and text the man. They tell him to meet them in a parking lot behind a Sunoco gas station. The man agrees and instantly heads over. At 7.35, he arrives and parks right next to them. They then direct him into the back seat of their car. After talking for a minute, Caballo and Goya whip out and tell him to give them everything he has. The terrified man agrees and they ruffle through his stuff. After getting what they want, they direct him out of the car and they drive back to the Bronx. Just like that, the SBs finally had a bit of money, and now it was back to their old ways. After scoring big, Goya was ready to score again, just in a different way. July 31st, 2020 it's a hot Friday afternoon in the Bronx and the Trinitarios are outside on 182nd. When Goya gets news of this, he instantly hops in his car and drives down to the block. At 5.30 p.m., he arrives on 182nd and hops out. <laughs> Thankfully, he pulled a Westbrook and everyone was okay. The incident was one of many in the Bronx during the summer of 2020, which was one of the worst periods in almost a decade. Because of this, NYPD decided to send peace and safety units across the Bronx. Each precinct would deploy a crew of officers who would walk around, talk to people, and try to maintain the peace. Well, for the 52nd precinct, the crew was led by a very controversial officer. This would be Officer Gina Mestre, who's known for her good looks, but also her terrible track record. In under seven years, of being an officer, Gina racked up 34 complaints about misusing her power and breaking laws. She also cost the taxpayers over a million dollars in 10 separate lawsuits. Well, given this, assigning Gina to patrol the SB area was a recipe for disaster. And what do you know, over the summer of 2020, Gina formed a relationship with one of the men she was supposed to watch out for. This happened to be Caballo, the Riz God himself. Long story short, Gina and Caballo started dating in August of 2020. At first, SB members were skeptical, assuming that Gina was using him to get information. However, Caballo was sure that this was the real deal and that Gina was on his side. How he knew this? Well, Gina was sending him classified police information and warning him of potential raids. She even told him to lay low because police had their eyes set on the SBs. So Caballo and his fellow members decided to chill out for the time being. But then bad news would come their way. November 4th, 2020. It's a regular fall day and the SBs are deep outside in front of Devo Park. All of the high-ranking members are having fun outside like they aren't the most hated in the city. Well, little do they know, two cars full of rivals are driving their way at 8 p.m. At 8.15, the cars park on the corner and the rival members hop out. They then run inside the park with no hesitation. Two unnamed SB members were hit, but thankfully they both made it. Regardless, Caballo was pissed and he wanted revenge as soon as possible. He instantly texted Gina and informed her that he wanted to go get revenge. She smartly told him to lay low until the smoke clears on the investigations, but Caballo was too angry and he could not wait to get back. Here is where things get interesting. The next day, November 5th, 2020, 9 a.m. Caballo puts on a blue hoodie, a black puffer, and a black hat. He leaves his apartment with no mask, hops in his white Toyota, and drives to his destination. He heads down Highway 87 to the neighborhood Mount Eden. He then parks and walks down Cromwell Avenue, a street with nothing but car repair shops. As he's walking down the street, he's looking for one particular car, a black Acura MDX with tinted windows. At 9.41, he spots the MDX in front of a van, so he instantly he reaches into his pocket and runs up to the car. <laughs> As it turns out, Angel was a Trinitario rapper by the name of Jayla Sombre. This was a devastating loss for the Sunset Trinitarios, especially as Caballo used to be his friend. 
Well, the next day, Officer Gina sends Caballo surveillance footage that clearly shows his face. However, because the incident took place in the 44th precinct, the local officers did not recognize his face. And as you would expect, Gina decided not to intervene. But she did tell Caballo that it's only a matter of time and if they do ask her, she will have to identify him. Well, that day would come and the surveillance was brought to Gina. Right away, Gina texted Caballo and told him to get the next flight out to the Dominican Republic. So Caballo fled the country that same night and decided to hide out in the DR. And that's when Gina had to officially identify the man in the video as Andrew Dunn. After this, Gina and her crew served multiple warrants throughout the Bronx as she pretended to not know where he is. They then searched his flight history and found that he had fled to the DR. From there, police searched for him, but for whatever reason, he kept being absent during their raids. This would continue for quite some time. In the meantime, the SBs would be without their commanding leader. But this did not mean that their presence in the streets was done by any means. And that takes us to June 20th, 2021. It's a Sunday night in New York and the SBs are looking to go have some fun. They know it's not safe for them to party in the Bronx, so instead they head out to a safer location. At 12.30 a.m., three SB members head to a popular club on West 207th. These would be Wanda Rivera, also known as Siru, Edward Perez, also known as Perico, and Ramon Rodriguez, also known as Pollo. Well, at 1 a.m., the young, rowdy members arrive at the club and begin walking around. While strolling through the club, one of the members notices a shiny watch on somebody's wrist. This happens to be an iced out Audemars Piquet, also known as an AP. The member instantly recognizes that it's an expensive watch, so he relays the information to his fellow members. Instantly, all intentions of having fun are thrown out the window. Now, all they want is the watch. So quickly, they leave the club and hop in their car. This is where they group together, put their masks on, and think about what they're gonna do. At 2.15, they finalize their plan and decide to park their car across from the club. The members patiently wait for the man to come outside for two and a half hours. Then at 4.40, the man with the watch finally walks outside with his friend. The man whose name is Milton Grant then walks to the parking lot and hops in his beautiful car, a satin wrapped BMW 7 Series, oh my goodness. Well, Milton then drives down Vermalaya Avenue headed for Dykeman Street. This is a strip full of popular takeout restaurants. Little does Milton know the crew of SB members are following behind him. At 4.45, Milton double parks on Dykeman and that's when the SB members pull beside him. Two members hop out and demand Milton to get out of the car. Milton instantly hits the gas to drive away, but that's when the members make a devastating decision. <laughs> After doing this, Pollo grabs the AP and they all head back to the Bronx. As it turns out, Milton Grant was a successful businessman, a father of two, and a loving husband. At the time being, NYPD had no clues for solving the case. At this point, the SBs were completely untouched by the law. Caballo was successfully hiding out in the DR, and the young members were getting away with wild acts such as this. This would last for another nine months, until NYPD started to put everything together. The first Shooting Boys indictment. On March 31st, 2022, 10 members were arrested on 15 felony counts. On this day, dozens of raids were served throughout the Bronx and 9 members were arrested and apprehended. Only one man remained, the one who NYPD had their entire focus on. Caballo was still hiding out in the DR and for whatever reason, he was never there when the raids were taking place. This became a game of cat and mouse as Caballo was always one step ahead, but finally, in late April, Caballo was found by U.S. Marshals. In typical New York fashion, all 10 members were sentenced pretty quickly, and the major headlining news came on November 17th, 2022. Caballo pled guilty to the event on November 5th, 2020 and received 35 years to life. After this takedown, police were still not satisfied for multiple reasons. Number one, they were skeptical on how Caballo kept ducking every raid. He's either a genius or someone from the department had to be helping him out. But wait, we're not quite there yet. In the meantime, four SB members were still left on the streets. These would be Siru, Perico, Pollo, and Vladdy SB. Without their large squad of members, the remaining guys knew that they needed to lay low. And that takes us to New Year's Eve. December 31st, 
31st, 2022. As you know, everyone in New York City is partying on this night, but for the SBs, they know that it's a risky move, especially after the indictment. If they stay in the Bronx, the chances that they have to do something or something is done to them is very high. So instead, they head across state lines to the city of Elizabeth, New Jersey. The city is about 45 minutes away, but it's definitely no walk in the park. The only reason they're there is because they know they won't run into rivals. Or will they? 3 a.m. After a night of partying, the SB members walk outside onto 1st Street in Elizabeth. Vladi SB casually walks down the street to his car, but right there is a man in a mask. This was the first major loss for the SBs, and it definitely took them by surprise. How did the rivals know where he was? Well, after the indictment and this incident, the SBs were depleted and on their last days. Only three members were really left, Cyru, Perico, and Pollo. Because they ducked the major indictment, they figured that they were in the clear for the Dykeman incident. But in New York City, everything will eventually be solved. After studying surveillance footage, the police were able to track the three members back to the incident. And finally, after nearly two years, police were able to put it all together. On April 19, 2023, Siru, Pollo, and Perico were all arrested. Today, they're currently in trial facing 35 to life. Because it was such a devastating incident, this was a major accomplishment by NYPD. And they weren't done just yet. Yes, after all of the SB members were taken down, they still wanted to know how Caballo was ducking the raids. And after a major internal review, they found out that Gina and Caballo had a relationship. However, this in nature is not a crime, instead just a violation of the codes of conduct. Because there was no basis for an arrest, police simply made Gina resign from her position. But due to her bad reputation, police were not satisfied with this result. So they got a warrant to look through her phone, and this is when their minds were blown. First, they discovered that Gina was informing Caballo about department investigations. Then they discovered that she was even telling him about who was cooperating from rival hoods. To make matters worse, Gina was giving him the names of witnesses in SB cases. As you may be aware, this is classified information and definitely a felony in the state of New York. She put innocent witnesses who were simply doing their civic duty in major harm's way. All while making $130,000 of taxpayer money a year. As they scrolled through her timeline, they found the texts of her informing Caballo about the raids and when to leave town. All of this led the department to charge her with four felony counts. She holds one count of racketeering, which amounts to a maximum of 20 years in prison. One count of conspiracy to obstruct justice, which carries a maximum sentence of five years. Then a count of conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, which carries a sentence of 20 years. And finally, one count of accessory to murder, which carries a maximum of 15 years. So it's safe to say that Gina is cooked. Once again, after another New York video, I'm simply impressed with NYPD. They seem to solve everything, even internal affairs. As for the SBs, I can't quite assume that they're done for good. You simply never know who's coming up in the next generation. But rest assured that everyone in this story will be away for quite some time. And that's why New York City is the third safest city in America. On that note, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Peace.